here I've got a pair of APA 7.5 mono blocks. This is the kind of original uh, zero feedback mono blocks, and these are these are working or they're operating, but the owner is aware that they're not sort of uh, performing maybe as they used to do. Um, so these are both for service, even though they're both working. Uh, now the service of these amplifiers is essentially identical to the Mono X and you know I've done a video on that before so we're not going to repeat that but what we'll do this time is uh, given that these are working we're going to take some measurements before we do the service um, and we'll look at the, the, the spectrum plots and the time domain plots and things like that and we'll look at that before and after the service and you know we'll see uh, see actually what benefits we get from doing that um, try and put some numbers on that and uh, just show what the you know what effects you get from uh, from uh, doing this kind of work so let's get let's get to that then we'll uh, power the amps up and connect them up to the audio analyzer this is us uh, connected to the audio analyzer then I've got a, a an 8 ohm termination on the output and then we're connected to the audio analyzer and I have no input signal here so this is us looking at the spectrum, the output spectrum with no input signal and you can see how noisy this thing is um, and uh, so let's look in some detail at what's going on here so I mean we can see our um, uh, 50 hertz mains there and then we see the rectified version of that 100 hertz um, and these are at higher levels than I would normally expect especially this one here but then we see harmonics of that going all the way up. Uh, you know, the, the whole spectrum here is just polluted with this uh, a mains noise and harmonics of that. And so that's just uh, looks looks terrible and it's going to sound terrible. You're certainly going to hear this. And uh, we see there we've got about uh, 600 microvolts of RMS noise, um, so that's that's not the peak noise. We're gonna we're gonna go and take a look in a scope, and we'll see just how garbage the output of this thing looks. Um, but just in general, very very noisy, and so we'll uh, we'll take a screenshot of this, and uh, we'll compare uh, what we see after we've done the sort of normal service. Uh, so just to show that actually this amplifier works. Let's turn on a signal here. So here's our uh, a signal turned on, and I've got about 10 volts RMS here. So that's about uh, 12 watts. Um, and uh, what you see here then is that the uh, 50 hertz and its harmonics, or particularly the 100 hertz and its harmonics, appears as sidebands around the main signal. So you end up with more junk around the actual audio uh, uh, when you actually start to add a uh, audio content and we can also see our setting to harmonic is very high here and if we switch to THDN we're up about 0.2 percent uh, and these amps should be about 0 0.04 um, so the harmonic uh, is the harmonic content is just way too high there and there's an adjustment we can hopefully bring that down so we're going to take some plots and uh, keep them to the side and then we'll go and do our service and uh, compare afterwards. Here we are looking at the time domain on the scope then and uh, very 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 clear that there's a bunch of junk going on there. We've got about 7 millivolts peak to peak of this junk and we can see uh, you know you can see the sort of 50 hertz period there. We're on 5 microseconds of division. Um, so two divisions per cycle there, that's our 50 hertz, uh, sorry, 5 milliseconds of division, not microseconds. Um, we can also see there's a whole bunch of high frequency stuff going on here, um, which we're not quite clear about. I mean, that wouldn't show up in the audio analyzer because it's got much limited bandwidth compared to a scope here. Uh, but if we sort of zoom in there and do a single capture. We've got some funny business going on here that uh, we're not quite sure the origins. That's just maybe general high frequency noise. Um, but again we'll take uh, we'll take some uh, screenshots here and we'll take some screenshots when we're finished and uh, do a comparison on that. 
covers off then and we know um, we know from you know past looking at the Mono X and other similar amplifiers that uh, these uh, all these capacitors here are going to be questionable just because of age and temperature in there. We can see the the usual thing where the capacitors are all leaning towards the regulators, and they probably won't show up in the camera. But I can see you know they're quite discoloured just by the heat in there. So you know, we're you know we're quite confident these are all going to be dry and uh, not doing their job uh, and we you know when we looked at the FFT when we looked at the spectrum there we saw a bunch of 200 sorry 100 hertz uh, a, a component and all its harmonics so we're suspicious there's something wrong with some of these uh, low current supplies here particularly the, the plus and minus 70 volt these these two uh, a regulator circuits here, these are the plus and minus 70 volts. Now we've got our little test strip up the side here, it's kind of hidden by this uh, cable here. But let's just go in, we'll do our usual DC measurements on this thing. So there's our 70 volts, and that looks alright. And minus 70 volts, reading a little bit low, but mm, stable enough DC level there. Uh, and the, the other ones are fine as well, minus 15 and plus 15. So you kind of do a quick measurement like that and you think, well that's okay then. However, we don't know what uh, junk is on these lines, you know, DC wise they look okay. But if we go in here and we measure, there's the plus 17, we're just going to measure what AC is on that. You see the, the reading drop here, that's just the front end of this thing charging up. Um, so that one's okay, that plus 70 volt rail there is okay, we're not showing any AC component. If we go and measure the minus 70, where we saw, you know, the, the rail was a bit low, and it still, again, takes a wee while to settle, but it's settling here just over 100 millivolts. So what we've got here is a, a regulator circuit, so it's supposed to give us nothing but DC, it's supposed to be super clean DC that we're using for our audio stage. And we've got this junk on it, uh, and that will just be modulating our music, and you're obviously going to hear that, and that's what's contributing to the junk in the FFT that we saw. When I say FFT, I just mean the spectrum, the frequencies, the spectrum plot that we saw in the audio analyzer. Um, and we know that this plus and minus 70 volt rail here has been stressed very hard. Uh, you know, if, if you're generating plus or minus, or let's say a 70 volt rail with a linear regulator like this, you maybe want sort of 5, maybe a little bit more volts of overhead. So, you know, so somewhere 75 to 80 volts on the input, you'd be happy with that. Um, what we find here though, is if we look at the input to this regulator here, so this is the plus rail, what we find is we've got 100 volts on the input of that regulator. Uh, and looking at the minus rail, same, 100 volts. Uh, so you're dropping 30 volts on these regulators and I'm not entirely sure what current we're pulling out of them, but the fact you start with such a high voltage means you've got to drop all of that 30 volts and it just dissipates power in here. It just means these guys are working hard. Uh, and that just contributes to the limited life. And the other aspect that really upsets me here is that we've got 100 volts uh, on the input of these regulators. These capacitors here are rated at 100 volts, so we're running them at the absolute limit. And again, that just leads to uh, a low life expectancy. And of course they're all 85 degree uh, rated parts. Um, in a hot environment, so again, that that just uh, is another factor that limits the life. Uh, so that's what we have, and you know, we kind of there's nothing nothing new there. Uh, so we're going to go and uh, uh, change all of these essentially, and we should smarten up these supplies, get rid of all that uh, ripple and junk on the rails, and uh, that should benefit our uh, spectrum plots. We'll just take a quick ESR measurement just to show that uh, these guys are dry just before we start to disassemble the thing. 
Let's take a quick look at ESR then. Uh, we know which ones are going to be the contenders. So there's, uh, barely see that needle moving there, just above infinity. So we know that guy's completely dry. And uh, same with the next one. Just barely moving the needle. So essentially all of these, as we as we expect, are completely dry. So next step is to get these boards out uh, and uh, remove all of these parts. We'll be replacing all of these capacitors and probably we'll do these regulators as well, given they've had such a hard life um, with such a high input voltage. Right, so all this stuff's been replaced um, and we're powered up again. And you can see what I do here is I pull all the all the uh, capacitors away from the regulator. I bend them all away, and then I pull the pull the regulators away from uh, these other capacitors as well. Um, so that that gives us a better uh, you know it just keeps things that bit cooler uh, or keeps the capacitors cooler anyway. And then the other thing is, of course, these are all now 105 degree parts. So a uh, uh, you know, that's going to help our, our lifespan of this thing. Uh, so, we'll just take a quick measurement of these uh, uh, two DC rails that were problematic. Um, so if we look at the plus 70, that's uh, pretty, pretty uh, close there, uh, 69.3, so I'm quite happy with that. And then the minus 70, uh, just a little bit over, so that's, that's really good, quite happy with that. Now, uh, if we f flick to AC, we see the same thing, our input, uh, just the input capacitors charging up there. And what we see now is the voltage, AC voltage drops down just to really the residual of the DMM, I think. If we check the other rail, the plus 70 rail, it should be the same. And there we are. So we're happy that things are a bit cleaner. This is obviously a very simple test. Uh, we'll go now, we'll connect up the scope, have a look at the time domain plot, and then we'll uh, shift on, and the uh, last measurements we'll make back on the audio analyzer, and we'll compare those FFTs, spectrum plots, compare those uh, before and after the changes. Here's the scope uh, connected up then, after we've done our service, and uh, we can see a dramatic uh, change in results here. We're reading peak to peak uh, noise here, or peak to peak signal anyway, is bouncing between 5 and 600 microvolts. We were up about 7 millivolts before. Uh, and the, scale, the screen's on the same scale, so uh, very easy to do a comparison there. I'll do a side by side uh, uh, a little bit later. Um, let's just turn up the, the gain here and we can see, that's me at my, my maximum on the scope. 500 microvolts of division, and there's just a very, very small amount of ripple there. That's even uh, we can see even the voltage has dropped 520 microvolts peak to peak. So that's very, very quiet now indeed. Um, and uh, so, okay, we're quite happy with that. Then we'll go now. We'll have a look at the spectrum plots on the audio analyzer. Here we are after we've done all our uh, service type stuff. We've changed all our parts and uh, trimmed the bias and trimmed the distortion and all the like. And this is our spectrum, looking at a live spectrum now. The amplifier's connected up and running. And uh, you know, before we saw all this uh, harmonic content of the rectified mains going all the way up the spectrum. All we can see here now though is the 50 hertz component down about minus 85 and then everything else beyond that is uh, much lower. We can't even see these uh, harmonics. And the noise levels dropped also. It was over 600 microvolts before. Now we're under 200 microvolts RMS. Um, so if we turn the signal on uh, we're up there about 10 volts, so that's about 12, 12 and a half watts. And uh, let's take a look at the distortion. So when we look at the distortion, we're down 0 0.002 this time, whereas uh, before we done our work, um, we were 0 0.2. Uh, 
uh, you know, this is a this is a very significant uh, improvement. Um, so there we are. I'll, I'm going to take some screenshots of these plots and then we'll put them side by side with the, the uh, plots we took before. And uh, that's really us finished here. OK, so let's look at the uh, results before and after. Look at them side by side. And uh, so here we are. The first uh, slide here is the scope uh, traces we looked at. So before we did anything, we saw that there was this 100 hertz uh, waveform here with some high frequency junk going on in there uh, and about seven, seven and a half millivolts peak to peak of that essentially junk. Um, and then after we've done our work, we've got a nice flat uh, waveform uh, and a 100 microvolts peak to peak uh, of uh, level there. So much, you know, very visual, very obvious improvement there. So this second slide is the same situation, you know, there's no signal presented here. This is just the noise coming out of the amplifier when the input is terminated. And we're looking at the frequency domain here. So before we did anything, we saw this big 100 hertz, uh, you know, rectified uh, mains uh, a component here and all the harmonics going up. You're really polluting up that spectrum. And we had about 600 and 30 microvolts of junk going on there. And after our work, we can't even see the 100 hertz. It's disappeared into the noise floor and the harmonics have all gone as well. So we've got a much cleaner, much quieter spectrum going on there and uh, much reduced noise. So the last plot here is with, this is us looking at the distortion before and after. This is total harmonic distortion and noise. Um, so when we put the signal on before, we end up with some more sidebands of the 100 hertz around that um, waveform there. And all of this junk contributes to the noise component. We also saw that the second harmonic was very high uh, there. And that's the, that's the main thing that's going to give you this uh, sort of higher distortion number here, 0.2%. Um, after we've fixed all our uh, you know, power supply, changed all our capacitors and all that kind of stuff. Um, and we we trimmed the bias and DC offset and uh, the harmonic balance. And so our second harmonic then is much lower. It's lower than the third in this case. So doing, doing that and getting rid of all this spectral garbage brings our THDN down to 0.0027%. So a very, very... Uh, noticeable improvement there and just visually you know looking at these graphs they're uh, you know night and day before and after so hopefully the the graphs and numbers there uh, show the benefits of this kind of work um and uh, so we're, we're everything's all put back together now and we're connected up the amps are powered up and they uh, there's absolute silence coming from the loudspeakers now when uh, nothing's uh, playing so that's where it should be we're really back to in better than factory condition given that we've uh, put in some higher temperature parts etc uh, so we'll just turn up the volume now we'll run them for a while and uh, make sure they're all settled before we send them back and now I'm 